integrate with our uh, total stability control system and make sure that the driver you know, has a lot of confidence but also has everything they need to stay on the road. It's going to be a, it's a really nice, t uh, neat, integrated uh, package overall in terms of you know, software and control, and it's totally seamless to the driver, and it will be a, a game changer in terms of safety. Yeah. So we talk power, you want to talk efficiency? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, some people out there say it can't be done. Um, I don't know who might say that, but uh, <laughs> I've heard rumors. Um, and uh, so we just did it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and we're going to post the whole video unedited <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And uh, no jump cuts. <laughs> yeah. And th this wasn't, you know, some ultra clean, precise test track simulation or something where we, you know, shut down a road. Nope. This is real world. You know, this is over grapevine. This is with traffic. This is true 500 miles. You know, we were loaded just under 82k. You know, we didn't. No special aero treatments. Yeah. Truck came off the line, shook it down, made it run. That's it. Yeah, there was like no fast moves here. Nope. So to be clear, it's not like, oh, and what, what, did, what tricks did they pull? Were there actually a whole bunch of tricks we could have pulled yeah. and didn't. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, you know, like as Dan said, like no, no special aero treatment. Uh, the oh, and by the way, we should mention there was yeah. no charging. Like we, we charged yeah, the truck. Yeah, yeah. We didn't stop to charge. Single, yeah. single driver ship. Char <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Minor uh, detail. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's not like 500 miles like with no load, with special aero and special everything. It's like fully loaded go, going from the Bay Area. We actually had to like go a bit north to get to, you know, actually add to get to 500 miles because you get, you know, uh, LA to the Bay Area is less than that. Well, we went all the way to San Diego here. So we, we, oh, okay, we, that's it, we yeah. stretched out on the southern end. And uh, I mean, do you want to see on the video? I mean, yeah, we, yeah. we have the proof. Absolutely. So. It's only eight hours long, so. Yeah, buckle in. <laughs> Don't worry, we brought lots of snacks. Yeah. But yeah. Standard trip. Down the five, up Grapevine, through LA, traffic, construction. You know, we got the bypass on the way station, but you know, running full 80, or just under 82, full deliveries, nothing to hide. Yeah, real, real world, real, real, it's, yeah. It, we, we did take one restroom break for, <laughs> there, there is a required mandatory 30 minute break within the first eight hours of operation. Okay. Took a small restroom break, but that was it. Yep. All right. Cool. So aerodynamic efficiency obviously matters a lot. And you can see it's, it's uh, shaped like a bullet. It's really aerodynamic. Um, and uh, that, that helps a lot. Uh, so we get to less than two kilowatt uh, hours. Two per kilowatt mile. hours a mile. Yep. So. And, and that's the name of the game yeah. is efficiency there. Yep. Yep. So. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's really efficient uh, in every way, and. Uh, I mean, the team's done a lot of awesome work. I mean, we yes. we went into the wind tunnel um, with this really cool model, rolling road, the whole nine yards and pulled in a lot of learnings and all of our features from the car side that you know, give us such great real world efficiency there. And really want to make sure that the, you know, the truck and the trailer have to work together. You know, this is a combination. This is not just the truck. If you optimize one, you actually might disrupt the whole combination. And so we spent a lot of time both you know, virtually but also in the wind tunnel to make this happen and really some next level engineering to, uh, of everything they had to do there. And you know, it means that we've got a really efficient truck. As I said, it's, a, it's as easy to drive as a Model 3. There's like, uh, like, with basically no training, you can drive this. Um, you know, you have to think bigger when you're driving it. <laughs> uh, but it's not like, uh, it's not hard to drive. It's really easy. And we put the center, it put the seat in the center for max visibility, low floor, you can stand up in the cabin. Yeah, and that's actually like a really big deal. I mean, and, I mean, you're a tall guy, Elon, like yeah. you're able to stand up just fine. And, you know, the nice thing is, is that if you're a truck driver and you're out during the day and it's, you know, it's cold, it's snowy, whatever, you can get in and you, this isn't a sleeper cab, this is a day cab. You can still stand up and you can you know, shed your jacket, put it on the wall, 
all in the comfort. You can put your coveralls on while in the cab. So if you have to go do a dirty job, you can do that comfortably as opposed to being out in the elements. So that's, you know, that level of space is you know, unheard of. We were able to do that with some pretty innovative packaging. And on top of it, there's plenty of cargo storage, you know, for drivers that need to bring any tools, other equipment along. And not to mention, you know, we've got the plugins, the wireless charging, everything they need on the uh, electronic side as well. Yeah, so uh, we've got efficiency in, in every aspect of the vehicle. Uh, I've got one touch a suspension dump, so you can, it's very easy to uh, attach to the trailer. Um, it's, it saves time and money. It's uh, The fleet's more efficient, and the driver's home sooner. Yeah, I mean, it, really, we're trying to extend the idea of this efficiency from not just while you're on the road, but into the yard as well. That's before and after you know the truck has done its job on the road. Because that means that you know, drivers, at the end of the day, are spending less time at the yard and they're getting home earlier and it makes their lives easier. You know, we've got a light test that's easy to execute, helps with compliance. There's all these little things that uh, the design team really spent their time you know, researching. They did ride-alongs, they studied, they did all this work. It's really cool to watch them put, I mean, I think they even took like a bunch of like the various cups and put them in CAD and you'll see them like put them in various cup holder sizes and places. They'll like uh, mock up a bag. They'll do all kinds of neat stuff to understand how a driver works throughout the day and uh, it means that they'll have a more efficient uh, experience overall. Yeah. Great. Uh, obviously to charge a, a truck like this quickly, you need a high power charger, so we developed a megawatt class charger as it's capable of charging at a megawatt to DC. Yeah. Um, and it's our next generation immersive cooling, so it's, it's liquid cooled. Uh, so you don't need like a gigantic elephant trunk of a cable. You can actually have a small small cable, and that cable it delivers uh, a megawatt. Um, and uh, yeah, we've three x the current density. I mean, this is really cool stuff. I mean, we took you're actually immersing the conductor in the coolant, this water-based coolant that we have, and we're then doing some really neat isolation monitoring on the back end to ensure that it's safe and delivering that it needs to. But it means that we can really shove a lot of current in a very, very small place. So you know, for those that have worked uh, and charged their cars on a V3 supercharger and the cable is nice and you know, maneuverable, it's the same thing here, but now we're just shoving a megawatt through it instead. So you know, this is key for high power applications like Semi, but you want to tell them or do you want me to tell them? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, going to be used for Cybertruck too. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is coming to our superchargers uh, next year. Yeah. Yeah. So. so the future of transport obviously requires a sustainable energy infrastructure. So you've got to have all, all aspects of the of the energy question answered. Uh, sustainable power generation. Uh, then you've got to store the power, and then you transfer the power to the vehicle. So, the, like the three pillars of a sustainable energy future are sustainable power generation uh, with uh, solar and wind. Uh, I'm actually a fan of nuclear, um, <laughs> which we should support, <laughs> um, and and uh, geothermal and many others. But uh, things that are sustainable uh, long term, we we uh, you, you, but but things like wind and solar are intermittent, so you have to have the battery pack to store the energy. So when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, you still have energy, and you can also buffer the power so you're not overloading the grid with spike loads. Yeah, and our semi customers are actively deploying this today, and you know, we're working with them so that they have the pathway to get towards you know 100% sustainable future. You know, but we have all of this at our disposal. You know, commercial solar and mega pack, and you know the mega pack is great because not only can it do things like peak shaving or some of the other uh, energy modulation, but it also provides a form of redundancy and backup. I mean, if we're going to ask you know, a fleet to take on these trucks and run them, they need to ensure that they're going to be able to charge them and keep their fleet running even in the amount of power outage. And that's one of the things that we can do with the mega pack on site as well. All right. So, and first deliveries are now. Yeah. So uh, we'd just like to, to thank uh, PepsiCo. Uh, they've been a great partner. Uh, hey, guys. Hey, how's it going? Thank you. Hey, how's it going? Um, 
So yeah, we, we completed our first uh, cargo run with a, a very enormous amount of Frito-Lays, uh, which I th I'm sure we have a lot of them here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yesterday, we were actually able to complete our first delivery, compliments of Frito-Lay. Uh, we took a truck down to their Modesto factory from here, and one of their drivers, we delivered the truck, they took it over, and they brought back uh, a load of snacks for everybody here to enjoy tonight. Yep. So, big thanks to Kirk and Steven, yeah. You guys, do you guys want to say anything? Yes. Okay. All right. Look. Nothing like this happens without amazing people. And so I just want to thank the people that spent countless hours to make this a reality. That's it. The people. I, that's it. I, I just want to echo. I know a lot of work went into it, and this is fantastic. We're thrilled uh, about the delivery today. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for letting us be a part of this. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. Yeah. Outstanding. <laughs> All right. Uh. All right. So, um, yeah. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Uh, it's it's been a long five long journey, long f five years. Uh, but uh, th this is going to really revolutionize the roads, and I think make the world a better place in a, in a meaningful way. Um, so, thank you for your support uh, through all the years. <laughs>